G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're going to be checking out this little yellow beast right here. Now, what this is, this is, and I hope I'm saying this right, this is the Fury B Futon. I think it's called Futon. I'll, li I'll link it down below anyway, but I thought a Futon was like a sort of fold-out sofa bed or something. But anyway, that's what this one's called, the Futon, and uh, pretty much what this is, this is the Fury B 5-inch racing drone. I know what you're thinking, Stuart. Didn't you just review a Fury B racing drone? And yeah, you'd be right. I just checked out the uh, the 180 Fury B, which I thought look had some really glaring issues, and I really wasn't a very big fan of it. I thought its components were poorly chosen. There were some things that I really didn't like. But looking at this, I think Fury B's actually actually made that jump and produced a pretty decent looking quadcopter. Anyway, what we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be sticking it on the bench, looking at how it comes, because this is a ready to fly drone, or a bind and fly I should say, how it comes, looking at all its components, and then uh, sort of having an overview of how it all came together and if I think it's good or not. And then in part two, we'll be taking it out, thrashing it around, putting a whole bunch of lipos through it, and uh, also getting Grumpy Trev to check it out as well. Anyway, enough rambling from me, let's stick it on the bench and uh, get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench and straight away there's two things that I want to show you guys that I think you're really going to like. So number one, just look at the profile of this thing. Like I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen, but look how clean and simple this whole build is. Like it doesn't have a receiver in here, so it's obviously, you know, a bind and fly, put your own receiver in here, but check out just how slim that is. I'm really excited with that part. And number two, check out its weight. So uh, I want you to take your guesses and this thing is, I'm going to say, look, because in my hands it feels very, very impressive. It sounds a bit sus. But, uh, so here, I'm going to compare it to this one. So this is a twig. This is one of the ultralights out there. I'm going to stick this on the scales. So I think this is about, from memory, 260 or 270 grams, something, 276 grams. So that's right there. That's for the twig. Take your bets. How much do you think that this futon or the 5-inch Fury B is going to weigh? 255 grams. I mean, that thing, that's like an ultra light and you've actually got some room in there. So that is totally crazy. So that is real carbon, all those people saying, oh no, maybe that's the difference. No, I'm, I'm amazed. Like, I can't believe it. Now, obviously, what we're going to do in this review is start on the outside and work our way in and uh, look at the motors, the ESCs, the props, and then work our way and look at these internals. But that is crazy for such an ultra light racer. Like, I mean, the other one that I looked at, the Fury V, um, I mean the four inch Fury B, this thing was, a, well, I'm just going to say, this thing was a heavy pig, so I stick this on the scales. Uh, this one is coming out, remember this was only a four inch version, 313 grams, so that thing was way too heavy. So uh, it's five inch bigger brother is absolutely so much better already, because look at the weight, it is so much lighter. So this thing, this thing I hope is going, uh, is definitely a step in the right direction. So with those two points out of the way that I think were very, very exciting, let's actually have a look at some of the components. So to break it down, it's a, it's a five inch unibody frame. So you can see on the bottom here, it's one solid piece of carbon. Now it looks fairly decent, nothing too special. It does look pretty smooth on this bottom side, actually better than some of the other carbon I've seen from Gearbest in some of their other quads. Uh, and I think it's a four millimeter thick frame. Let's check that out now. Righty, got my little, uh, what do you call these things? Calipers right here. Putting this on, yeah, there we go. So a four millimeter thick frame. So we've got that there, it's one solid carbon. Should be pretty strong. I think we're going to be great there. Uh, on the outside, look, I really like these props. They're not Cyclone, so they're not my favorite, but the style is copied or based on, I don't know the actual brand of these ones, but they look very, very similar to the Dow Triblade 5040s, uh, the V2s. And look, they're a great prop. I flew them for a long time, so that's good. You do get a spare set of these somewhere in the box that it comes with. Uh, underneath, and we're going to come back and talk about these motors quite a bit, I think, because there's a fair bit of referencing and things that I want to talk about on the motors. So what these are, they actually don't have any labeling on them, which is very, very interesting. I did a bit of a Google search, and it does say that they are 25, uh, sorry, 2205 motors, 2500 kV. So very, very cool little motor there. I don't know what sort of magnets they're using, though. And the one thing that I do am a little bit skeptical about because of this quad and because it's so light, like that weight has to come from somewhere and uh, that weight has to disappear from somewhere and I feel like the motors are where this quad has sort of lost most of its weight because otherwise, how can it be so light? Yes, there's some things in here, super clean stack in the middle, which we'll talk about and all that one board and all that sort of stuff. 
but on the outside I really think the big difference between say an ultralight like maybe one of these uh, is the motors. So these motors are a little bit heavier on here, these are 2207s or 2206s. These ones are meant to be 2205s but they look absolutely tiny. I'll flash some pictures on there because that's probably a little bit out of focus but they look at like a very very short stator in here but We'll have to take them out and see. I suspect that in terms of how it goes on the actual outside, how these motors actually perform, I'm going to say it's pretty average. But it's going to make for an awesome upgrade if all I have to do is swap these motors out. I think the rest of the quad is going to be an absolute powerhouse. Now on the middle right here, we do have some ESCs, the R20 amp B or Heli S ESCs. So look, no dramas right there. 30 would have been better, but I think on a light quad like this with sort of some smaller motors, that's going to be no dramas, whatever. So 30 amp burst as well. And then moving towards the middle, I think this is another star of the show. So what we actually do, I'm going to prop it on its side. So hopefully you guys can see this. That's it. You have one board in there. That is all you have. So that's one of the Kakut flight controllers. And if you want to check out the Kakuts, you can check out this little review I've done of one of them up in here. But this one's an all-in-one. So it's got your OSD, your VTX, uh, and it's basically your PDB. So that is it. That is all you need in your build. And look how clean. Look how much room you have in there when you use one of those builds. So very, very cool stuff right there. Uh, on the top, um, of course, oh, oh, and I should mention, you know, the OSD, it's using MWOS, OSD as well, so that should be pretty cool, pretty standard sort of stuff. Uh, you do get this little plug coming off right here. See if I can get this out for you guys in shot. So you do get a tiny little plug right here. That's what you're going to plug your receiver in. If it doesn't fit the, with, with the receivers that you're working, simply cut it off and solder it in. So no dramas right there. Uh, you've got an FPV camera on the front, so sitting nice and pretty up here. And the thing I do like about that is you actually get a really cool extra, which I'll talk about in a minute as well. Uh, on the back, here's one thing that I really do like. So you've got your programmable ESCs, or not ESCs, your program, pro, excuse me, programmable LEDs on the back. So you can set them up to be whatever color you like. And then you've also got your VTX on the back here. And traditionally, I would say, oh, I don't like it how these, how these VTXs are mounted or anything like that. But this one... It looks pretty great, like it's in a really secure spot. It's been zip tied down quite well and it's uh, screwed straight into the carbon at the top. So I don't think really you're going to have too many issues with this VTX breaking off whatsoever. I know on the old Fury B it was really, really poorly just strapped to the back and there was nothing that it was holding it down to. But with their LED design and how they've cut some two little zip tie holes in here, I think that's fantastic for this one. Now with the VTX, one thing I would like to change right here is its strength. So it's a 600 milliwatt VTX, which to be honest is a little bit disappointing because uh, I don't think that, that makes it a little bit more difficult when you're going to fly around with friends. Yes, you're going to probably get a little bit better performance, especially if you're flying solo and you're going to be doing a little bit of a, some long range sort of stuff with the right antennas. 600 milliwatts is definitely taking apart my chopstick there. 600 milliwatts is definitely very, very useful for some, some applications. But I think for a racing drone, it's all about racing other people. So I would prefer to see a 200 milliwatt in here or a switcher. So that's one little change that I would like to see, but I still think it's better than 25 anyway. Uh, and then I think uh, there's not too much to talk about, but some cool parts on the top. So I did speak about the FPV camera and that's rocking the Sony Superhead, so the CCD camera, but the Superhead 2, I should say. But check out this you actually get this awesome little 30 degrees GoPro strap that you can get on there. So you're going to strap GoPro holder that you can put in there. So I'll flash a picture on that on the screen as well. And I think that's fantastic. That's really probably going to protect some of the, I guess, the front camera so you don't have to worry about this thing smashing. Uh, you can simply put that on the top, zip tie it down, and then uh, you should be ready to rock and roll. Well, talk about a mission. Uh, that took about 20 minutes to go and actually find my GoPro. I was a little bit worried. I'd lost it buried in the bottom of one of my packs. Anyway, so uh, what, you've do, what you do with this little GoPro mount, let's, we've got two little straps just right here. So that's how it's going to zip tie straight down. You can see those little cutouts there. So you zip tie it down and then it's simply going to fit perfectly in there. It sits on the top of your quad at a 30 degree angle. Very, very nice, very nice little compact thing. And you've also got a little bit of room. I'll show you some photos of this as well. I'll flash them up. You've got a little bit of room to sort of put a Velcro strap across the top. So it's not going to go anywhere. But yeah, that thing holds your GoPro perfectly. So that's very, very cool. So we'll stick that on there. And then last but not least, uh, you get one of these little omnidirectional antennas. Now, honestly, what I probably would prefer, because I think this thing's biggest strength is that it's, uh, it is so light, I'd probably prefer a little whip to stick on the top, especially because uh, this thing's pumping out 600 milliwatts. So you're probably not going to be flying that well anyway with other people. So uh, 
if you're just going to be flying by yourself, I think reduce the weight because these omni circular polarized antennas are definitely better when you've got more pilots in the air as well. So uh, it's just sort of a bit of a mismatch right there as well. So look, it's not a bad antenna, it's still going to do its job, but I prefer a tiny little whip antenna. I can't wait for the day when uh, they actually just start making these with little dipolars sticking out the top and we don't have any of these big SMA connectors or anything like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to put, uh, actually now I'm going to flip it over. Uh, then underneath, uh, one last little part, you do have this little rubberized part, so nothing's going to be sliding around. You've got your pretty standard Velcro strap. And then the only thing really that I would do before changing this, uh, I'm going to probably zip tie that down so this isn't going to get caught up in the props. I'll probably take out two, two of the screws in each of the motors to make it even lighter. Look, every gram sort of does count. And then uh, I think we'll be ready to rock and roll. Oh, I should mention, this part actually looks a little bit tacked on. So you can see there we've got the buzzer right there. And that is probably one of the parts I think, gee, that part could have been designed a little bit better. It sort of looks like it's just been pushed and glued into the side. But other than that, you know, I think Fury B has really done their homework or done a massive improvement compared to this porker here, which I really, really slammed. And uh, a lot of you would have seen this, this review. This is the 180. You can check this review out up here. But uh, this one I totally slammed and I really didn't enjoy flying this one. But I can tell on first impressions, this thing is going to be awesome. So I can't wait to put a few packs through this and also get Grumpy Trove to try it out as well because I think he's going to be very, very surprised and shocked that uh, this thing comes as a result of some earlier experiments with this little porker right here. So I can't wait to put some lipos through it. Oh, one little nice little bonus. This actually worked out really well. This plug right here, uh, it actually works with these tiny little FSA8S receivers. So if you're like me and you like using your Turnergy Evolution, that thing just, I didn't have to do any soldering. I can't believe this thing is ready to rock and roll. So uh, yeah, anyway, very, very cool. Nice little bonus there, how we can just plug that straight in, especially if you're using the fly sky stuff and you're ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, so there it is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My first impressions on the, the Fury B Futon or whatever, the five inch racing drone from Fury B. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, the, the biggest thing about here, it's good choice of components. I guess the sizes and the prop sizes and uh, the motor sizes and those sorts of things. But it is so light. I can't believe how light this is. And I really think that's going to make it like it is going to zip through the air so fast. So I'm going to stick a nice big battery on here and absolutely haul it around when pump some lipos through it. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Stay tuned for part two because what we'll be doing, we'll take it out to the field and we'll be putting those lipos through it. And uh, we'll also be getting Grumpy Trev to check out as well because I know he's pretty interested in this one. And uh, he's had a quick squeeze at it uh, behind the scenes and I think he likes this one as well. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV related content. And as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.